After announcing an 8.2 million quarterly loss in the US, Commodore announced voluntary bankruptcy liquidation on May 6, 1994. Commodore UK and Commodore Netherlands survived the bankruptcy, but failed to place a bid to buy out the rest of the operation. Instead, a successful bidder was the PC conglomerate ESCOM, beating a bid from Dell on April 22, 1995. Commodore Netherlands dissolved and Commodore UK went into liquidation in August of the same year. According to Wikipedia, ESCOM paid 14 million for the assets of Commodore International and quickly started using the Commodore brand on a line of PCs sold in Europe. We also know that Commodore International's Canadian subsidiary authorized 3D Micro to manufacture PCs with the Commodore brand name in late 1993. So there were generic licensed Commodores made in Canada from late 1993 and in Europe from late 95. This gorgeous Amiga looking Commodore seems to have been manufactured in early 1993, before the deal with 3D Micro and ESCOM's ownership of the brand. In this miniseries we are restoring this Commodore 486 SX25 and I guess we are trying to figure out if this is the last real Commodore PC. If you want to watch part 1 and 2 first, there will be links below. And if not, here is a quick recap. In part 1 we did some research and concluded that it must have been manufactured in early 93. Unfortunately we didn't have the original motherboard, so we installed the quirky and interesting Techmedia board, so I could play some DOS games on this cool Commodore. In part 2 we managed to find a matching motherboard and did some basic tests. At first it wouldn't post at all and that turned out to be some corrosion in one of the ISA slots, caused by a leaky Varda. The board eventually did post with one of my graphics cards in one of the other slots. However, that's not the end of that problem, and I will get back to some more video issues in a minute. We then moved on and did some benchmarks with different 486s. At first we got some really weird scores. Turns out that this board needs to have the turbo jumper shorted to run at full speed. I was then a bit tricked by the scores we got. The board seems to perform identically whether we use the SX or DX. And that turned out to be 3D benchmarks. Apparently it doesn't make use of the FPU in a DX. I also noticed that we got a slightly lower score when we added more RAM. And thanks to the comments in the previous video, this board has been identified. It's very similar to the Aquarius Systems BCOM 4D33-50F, also known as the Commodore T486DX. In this video we are going to clean up the mess that the Blood of Arna has made on the board, and perhaps fix an issue it may have caused. Then we need to take a look at those RAM sticks and find out why they are causing lower benchmark scores. I have also ordered some faster crystals for this board, but I don't know if they will arrive on time to be a part of this video. Okay, so let's start with the issue we have with the graphics card. In the previous video I just tried some random cards in random slots. And this series logic apparently worked in a couple of the slots. But I wasn't very methodical, so let me first quickly try that card in all the slots. Because I think we may have another issue here. And by the way, this is a Sirius Logic 5422. Okay, so in this slot, that card doesn't work either. Uh, I guess I'll reseat the card and try again. And uh, now it works. So I guess that slot needs to be cleaned. And same problem here. Okay, so I removed the card and put it back in, and we still have the same problem. Let me try with some deoxide. Okay, let's try again. And yeah, now it works. So I guess we had some mild corrosion in those two slots. Now let me try with a different card. Uh, this card is a TVGA 8900D. And it doesn't boot. Let's try the next slot. And same thing with the other slots. So this card doesn't work in this board at all. Now let's try with this TVGA 8900CL. Uh, that card works. 
Huh. Let me try it out in the other slots. And yeah, this card seems to be working. And sure enough, it works in all the slots. Now let's try with an ET4000. Uh, that card works too. And it seems to be working in all the slots. And I don't think I have any other cards at hand. So that is as far as we can test at the moment. But the reason I wanted to test this is because it was suggested in the comment section that there might be corrosion on this jumper here. And that jumper is for color or mono. And perhaps some of these cards override that setting. And perhaps one of my cards doesn't. So we're gonna retry this test after we have cleaned the board and see if it makes any difference. Well, the next step is to clean up that mess that the Bloody Varda has made on the board. And we're in luck, so it's not that much really. But we need to clean it up because otherwise it's going to continue to corrode. Let me move much closer in with the camera. Okay, so let's see what kind of mess we have. So starting from this side here, the keyboard connector looks a bit ugly, but it seems to be fine. Uh, then moving on here, we have this fuse here. And it has some green legs too. And then there's some sort of a sticker here. What is this? Let's see if we can peel that off. Uh, okay, so I think, yeah, this is a part of the battery. Yeah, this is one of the legs of the battery. So we're just gonna have to remove it. And then some more mild corrosion here. And moving along this edge, we have a similar thing going on here. Green legs on these components, but they're probably fine. And then it kind of stops here. And the rest of the PCB is clean. And this trace here is fine. But there is some corrosion on this trace here. And then we've got some more corrosion on this larger trace here. So we're gonna have to clean that up. And if we take a look at these jumpers... Yeah, they are really stuck. Let me see if I can remove them at all. No, they are completely stuck. Because they are very heavily corroded. Let's see if I can get the camera on an angle here. Yeah, check out this crustiness here. So that might be the reason why one of the graphics cards we tested doesn't work on this board. So let's find out. Okay, so I've got some 20% white vinegar. And I am only going to apply where we have corrosion. Because too much of this stuff for too long will actually damage the board. And it doesn't make any bubbles, so perhaps someone has already cleaned this board with vinegar. Ah uh, yeah, check this out. So perhaps not. And uh, this stuff smells really bad. So perhaps there is something better that we can use to clean up battery juice. But this stuff works really well. I just wish it wouldn't smell this bad. And I'm gonna put some on this trace here too. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it on for about five minutes and then rinse it off. And I am of course going to replace these two jumpers. Okay, let's make sure we get all that vinegar off the board. Otherwise it's going to destroy more than it helps. Yeah, there is still some corrosion left on some of these legs, so I'm gonna give it the same treatment again. Until it's all clean. And I almost forgot the corrosion we have inside the ISA slot. So hopefully the camera picks it up, but there definitely is some corrosion inside here. So I'll give it the same treatment. Okay, so after the second treatment, I'd say all the corrosion is gone. Well, aside from these pin headers, but they're going to be replaced anyways. 
So that did a trick. Let's move on to the other side of the board. Uh, this side doesn't look too bad. So this trace here has some minor corrosion. And the solder is corroded in some spots. But yeah, this side wasn't too bad at all. So I'll just quickly give it the same treatment. Alright, so all the visible corrosion is gone now. But there is still some corrosion underneath the solder mask. On just a few spots. So let's clean that off with the grinding pan. Yeah, this is a really simple fix. Especially if we compare it to the Commodore PC-10 project. Where we had to clean half the bloody board. This shouldn't take more than a few minutes. And hopefully the flux will take care of the rest. And I just realized that some of this stuff isn't visible on camera. With this angle. But there isn't much to see. There's just some tiny amounts of corrosion. Yeah, I think that's all we need to clean with flux on this side of the board. So let's just thin those bare copper areas that we have. With a tiny amount of solder on my largest tip. And we better clean that stuff off right away. While it's still warm. And I guess we need to remove the leg from the old battery. It seems to be just snipped off. Okay, let's see if we can clean that old solder off with some wick. And yeah, for sure. And some more cleaning. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this. So let's remove those crusty pin headers. Uh, they are a bit crusty, so let's use some flux. And I guess I'll reflow a couple of the other soldered legs here. And I'm gonna add some fresh solder to these pins to make the desoldering a bit easier. Yeah, these pins don't fancy taking solder too easily. And I'm using a really large tip, but that doesn't seem to help much. Let's try with some more heat. Yeah, they really don't take solder at all. Let's try with the desoldering gun. Yeah, I don't know what chemistry is going on here, but we basically have the same problem as with the Commodore PC-10. The solder is just really hard to get off when it has started to corrode. And I'm using a lot of heat. Let's try with more flux. And more fresh solder. And let's just try again. Well, I got some of it off, but I still think there is some solder left. Okay, so I checked and some of the solder came off on the second try. But there is still some left inside those pads. Yeah, check this out. So, <laughs> these pins came off with a jumper. So that was some pretty bad corrosion. I think I'm gonna remove this this plastic piece first. Let's see if we can just apply some heat and remove the remaining pins one at a time. And yeah, that worked fine. Okay, now let's just remove that flux. And uh, then we have the same problem with the leg of the battery here. And uh, I tried a couple of times with tons of flux. But the solder just doesn't melt. So let's try to grind some of that crusty surface off. This method worked on the Commodore PC-10. So perhaps it will work here too. Let's try again with some more flux. And some more fresh solder. And yeah, that worked. So that did a trick. Let's clean out that through hole with a desoldering gun. Mm. 
And here's the old pin. Okay, so let's get some fresh pin headers on the board. Uh, let's go with red pin headers, because why not? Red and blue always looks good in a Commodore. And some more cleaning. Okay, well, I'd say that's fixed. Now, I guess we might as well get a coin cell on the board. Since we have the soldering iron out. And I ran into a minor problem with my coin cell holder. There isn't quite room enough for it. So I decided to solder the diode standing up like this. Uh, then I'm just gonna snip the leg off an oversized diode. And solder it standing up too. Now if I can heat that large ground plane up with this tip that is. And I did eventually. Okay, let's see if this bodge will work. Well, really not ideal, but now we can solder in the coin cell holder standing up on its side. So this also means that I'm gonna have to remove the motherboard. Well, I need to replace that coin cell. So I guess I will replace it with a coin cell that stands up whenever that day comes. But for now this is gonna have to do because I don't want to wait for shipping and make this video next week. Well, this was impossible to solder on camera. But down here is our diode and it's hooked up to this leg here on the positive side. And then there is just a lead from a diode coming up here. So, a bit bodgy, but I guess it will work for now. Uh, now we only need to add two fresh jumpers instead of those crusty ones we pulled out. So, this jumper here says color or mono. And as someone mentioned in the comments, this jumper here probably clears CMOS, but it's not labeled. Okay, let's hook this board up to the power supply. Uh, before we put a coin cell into that holder, let's just make sure that it isn't charging. Well, we've got four volts. So that's a bit suspicious. Hmm. Okay, so apparently I need to learn something here. This was new to me. So if we measure the current before the diode, We've got 18 milliamps, as expected, so that's charging. And if we measure on the other side of the diode, it's not charging anymore. So the mod is correct, but what's up with that voltage? So as you can see here, we've got 4.8 volts before the diode, and after the diode, we still got 4.3 volts. I was expecting 0 volts. But the mod is correct, so it's not charging the cell. So let's get a coin cell inside that holder. And now we should be able to save the settings in BIOS. Okay, let's get some deoxids and those cleaned up sockets. And see if that slot works now, as it should. And it does. So that was a quick fix. And now that we have replaced those pin headers and jumpers, let's try with that graphics card that didn't work before. Okay, so now that we have replaced that jumper and pin header, let's see if that card that didn't work before works now. Uh, no, it doesn't. Uh, I guess I better check at least one more slot. Uh, no, it doesn't work. So either this card is incompatible with this motherboard, or perhaps this card is broken. Hmm. 
Well, I used it in another project quite recently. I guess I could just quickly check it. Okay, so I just grabbed a random project I had laying around. Let's see if that card works. Oh no, I don't think it does. So I guess that card is shot. Uh, better check with another card here too. In case there's an issue with the motherboard. And it's not, so with this other card it works. So crap, this card is shot. Well, I guess it could be a future repair project. But for now, let's move on with the project at hand. Okay, let's take a look at those RAM chips and see what's going on and see why they are giving us lower scores. Man, these were not easy to get out of the board. Yeah, I'm gonna have to use two screwdrivers to pull the tabs. <laughs> it's still not easy. So, not the best SIM sockets for sure. But at least they don't have plastic tabs that breaks off. Okay, let's see what speed we've got. So we've got three chips. So probably parity. And they are 70 nanoseconds. Now uh, what speed have we got here? Now these are 70 nanoseconds too. So that's weird. Well, in that case, I have no idea why they slow down the scores. Let's do a quick test. And counting up 4 megs. And we need to get into BIOS since we didn't have a coin cell before. Let's see, keyboard installed, VGA, floppy drive A. Let's save and boot. And then we are just prompted to wait, and absolutely nothing is happening. I guess I need to reseat and add some more deoxy to the controller card. Uh, let's try again. Uh, now we're only getting three messed up beeps. Let me check what they are. And it's not entirely clear in the description I found online. So let's add the postcard and see what codes we get. And it hangs at 22. So let's see what that is. And the manual I found, it didn't have an error code 22 for Army BIOS. But for Phoenix BIOS, it was keyboard controller error. So I guess we should reseat and get some deoxid in the keyboard controller chip first. Now this is far from the battery, so I doubt that it has been damaged by the battery. But all chips can oxidize. So let's try again. Okay. So it prompts us to wait again, and then it just hangs. Uh, I guess I'll clear the CMOS and we'll boot again. Okay, let's try again. Uh, now, of course, all the settings are gone in BIOS. And that immediately got us those weird beeps again. Huh. And this time it has passed 22 and went into 0E. And the manual I found online doesn't give us any info about error code 0E either for Army BIOS. But for Phoenix it's the code for initialize IO components. And for award BIOS it's test video memory and write sign on information to screen. So, I uh, guess it's one of the cards. So, let's pop those cards out. Add some deoxid. And try again. 
Okay, let's see if that made any difference. And I can see on the postcard that it doesn't get proper power. So that first slot is not reliable. Let's try the other slots and see if they are any good. Yeah, that one is good. Yeah, the RAM check behaves really weirdly. Yeah, something is messed up. Maybe there is something wrong with the RAM chips. But first I want to see if all the slots are working with the diagnostic card. That one seems good, but the board doesn't post. And we're getting code 31. But the board still doesn't post. Let's try with the graphics card in the last slot. But it still prompts us to wait. Hey, this was supposed to be a quick test. Well, I heard a faint sound from the diskette drive, but then nothing. Okay, so that's pretty normal. Let's try with the controller in another slot. Uh, now the diskette drive sounds normal. And it's starting DOS. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So, what happened earlier? Yeah, DOS is running fine. Huh, so that's weird. I'll do a couple of reboots and see if it's consistent. And it's not, unfortunately. So now we only get 832k. So something is glitchy. I guess I'll swap those RAM chips. Okay, let's try again. With some other tested sticks. And the 4 megs are back. And yeah, it seems to be working again. So I'll do a few reboots to check for consistency again. Well, now the board runs consistently. I did about 10 reboots and then I ran some benchmarks. And as you can see, it runs just fine. So I guess I need to replace a few ISA slots. I did a quick search online but came up with nothing. So if you know where to get new ISA slots, please let me know. Next I will do some more tests of camera, and if at least a few of the slots are ok, we can proceed with the project right away. Otherwise I'm gonna have to wait for parts and do another video while we wait, because we need at least a third slot to play some DOS games. And by the way, I had some trouble finding matching crystals. I only found 60 MHz crystals in this form factor. So if these are getting hard to get, I wonder if we can use some other form factor and perhaps do some mod to make them fit. Let me know your thoughts on that. Well, the damn Varda messed up this board too, but at least we have a matching board for this project and I'm sure we'll fix it somehow. If I can't find any new slots, we can salvage some from another board. But I would definitely prefer to use new slots. In the next video in this miniseries, we are going to either install at least one new ISA slot, or put the motherboard in the case and install a sound card, CD ROM in a hard drive, and of course choose a suitable graphics card and play a DOS game. And try out that faster crystal, of course, which unfortunately hasn't arrived in the mail yet. Thank you for watching. If you want to support this channel, like, subscribe, leave a comment and ring the bell below.